So back to anodes. So each anode, whether it's zinc, magnesium, or aluminum, they have a uh, different uh, negative, small negative electrical charge built into them. So the zinc has always been most effective in salt water. Um, the um, magnesium for, well, now, and this study or searches and, and information that I found the other day with my customer was that they're finding the zinc alone is not as, it is still effective, but the aluminum anodes for salt water are just as effective, plus they're lasting twice as long as opposed to the zinc that, that they're replacing every year um, in order to stay on top of the, the uh, corrosion and electrolysis. So back to my original point here, electrolysis happens when your two different metals are mounted together. So a stainless steel screw mounting into an aluminum boat, over time, you're going to have electrolysis happen. And corrosion happens anytime you're around water, especially with metal boats and that stay moored or, or floating in the water. Um, the purpose to have anodes on your boat is so that little electrical charge that's built into those, um, those anodes will attract the energy. So little negative electrical charge will take that sac and basically it's a, called a sacrificial anode for a reason that will take the electrical field around your boat and, and attract all of the other electrical fields in a purpose of, in a goal to focus any corrosion to that anode. Well, what we found in, uh, we went through and we tested everything with my friend's boat when he showed up and said, um, man, have you ever seen anything like this? Like if you look at the, uh, his water line, it on, on the gunnel, you'll have a water line where the boat sits stagnant in the water and where it kind of drafts, where it's sitting at, right? Well, just below that water line, he had a noticeable uh, splotches, kind of little, little spots about the size of a quarter that were, you couldn't, you couldn't feel them but it looked like it was growing and it was it was strange um and it was only below the water line uh mind you the boats out of the water had only been in brackish water so out uh in the bay so you got fresh water in the river and you got salt water coming in and out through tide from the ocean and that's brackish water well, it only been in brackish water one time in its life. He's owned it for four years now and has always used it at uh, the high lakes. So therefore high alkaline level. So fresh water with a lot of minerals, that is a high alkaline water. Never had a blemish on this aluminum whatsoever. And I'm not saying that it's actually a blemish, but it was, it was splotchy. It almost looked like it had, um, it was like a growth. So his first thought was he's having this major electrical or electrolysis issue happening, um, just showing up on the, on the side of the boat. So we went out. I grabbed my multimeter and I grabbed uh, test lights and uh, we went out and hooked the 
ground to the boat and went to a positive source on the battery and bingo on my multimeter i had a uh, battery voltage off of anywhere in his boat that as a ground source on the aluminum it completed the circuit to the battery positive now we physically went through every single wire every ground that is isolated everything from the uh battery battery switches gauges uh the ground source for your gauges for your lights for your switches that have backlights um his nav light his horn his anchor light uh on the back of the boat he's got two main engines or main engine and kicker motor that's mounted to the back of the boat and every single electrical source was isolated to either uh obviously the positive side came from the switch source but the ground side the negative side we had gone through and completely isolated everything on the boat to bus bars ground buses so therefore not to overload anything on the batteries uh the two posts on your batteries we would run we ran a negative cable uh between the two negative posts and back to the main bus bar back on the transom so that the both engines and anything on the back of the boat can hook to that bus and we were able to relocate the batteries to further towards the bow of the boat uh to help display some weight so there was nothing absolutely nothing that we could find that, that we put in there on those buses or anything that was connected to the boat as ground so in the process of elimination we went through and found that if we disconnected the battery negative from uh the main engine off of the negative bus bar then the boat was no longer part of an active ground circuit which of course it's going to be so we're sitting here racking our brain going how in the world is that not like we got to make sure that none of our accessories or nothing's hooked to the to the to the boat is ground and your um your fuel sending units your gauges everything so if you have a metal hold down uh a strap on the back of a gauge say just like this right well here's a gauge on the back of the gauge you have two posts if this sits into the dash like so using a plastic hold down you can have your two nuts on there and hold that gauge down to say your center console or your dash and that does not make contact say your this this post here is your ground that is the negative right well you can imagine if by putting this one on here it being metal would complete the circuit to ground off of just your gauge so needless to say we found that all of his gauges well not all of them so mind you we had repowered his boat with hondas what we took off of there was a two-stroke mercury and this is a center console 21 foot dory boat so flat bottom big deep aluminum boat everything's aluminum in it uh, aluminum center console on uh, uh wood wrapped floorboards okay well the center console is mounted right to the aluminum uh supports via stainless steel screws uh the fuel tank uses a standard electrical um float reed style float 
um, using resistance. Center post on that gets voltage from the key switch. And the way the resistance works, it has a ground negative source touching the sending unit, which is in turn touching the metal on the on the fuel tank, completing circuit to ground with the boat. Now each one of those screws and rubber seals and da 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 da, da all that stuff is supposed to isolate that away from the back, the boat. Well they don't. And they any motor that has battery cables that is bolted through the uh, transom assembly, swivel housing to the back of the boat with stainless steel bolts directly to the aluminum, you are making contact to your metal, no matter what you do. So the reason why it doesn't energize the boat is because all of the grounds on all of your components on an engine, you will have ground straps that run, say, from uh, the block, it's grounded, to the base of the engine. The lower units are grounded to the center section with an additional ground strap. Your uh, bolts holding your anode on the bottom of your trim assembly have an additional ground that wrap around from the mounting bolts to the mounting bolt for your uh, trim. Therefore, if you didn't have your ground source to your battery, it leaves an open electrical field, right? So I was thinking about this while talking to him the other day, and I said, well, you know, think about it when you go to the gas station and you're filling up gas cans. They do not, you were absolutely told to take your gas can out of the back of your truck and set it on the ground in front of the pump. Do any, does anybody know why that is? Well, that is due to the electrical field that happens. Static electricity builds in the back of your vehicle just by driving around with the wind blowing past your vehicle and a simple spark from static electricity, say, jumping from you that's grounded to the static electricity in the back of your vehicle just by something back there not being grounded, like a plastic fuel tank, that'll have an electrical field. And if it's not grounded, that spark can cause a big boom. Well, by all rights, it's the same exact idea in a boat. Your boat hull aluminum, whatever it is, has to be grounded, has to have somewhere to go. Basically, your only ground source is going to be your battery. So everything has to be isolated back to your battery. The ground side has no electricity going through it. Even though it is incorporated with your battery, it's not utilized as your switch. So that's... Uh, once I wrap my mind around it, I tried to explain that with my, my text, and you can imagine there's a lot of information there, but you can imagine their, uh, the look in their eyes where it was, uh, huh, okay, if you say so, <laughs> but by all rights, I, I, I went around the whole entire yard and, and, and confirmed it with, every, with my text that every single aluminum boat has, uh, you touch the boat with your ground on your multimeter, anywhere on the aluminum, you go to a battery source, battery positive, and it will complete the circuit. It does not transfer electricity, but it shows that that boat is grounded. Um, you just can't utilize on a switch source you cannot utilize your boat as ground because then now you're incorporating electricity into that. And that has a whole other mess of, uh, of problems. So on that note, hopefully y'all followed me and 
<laughs> understood what I was talking about. That was uh, that was a lot of a lot of testing and a lot of information and 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 you know if we're not learning something new every day, we're doing something wrong. So as much as I've been around this stuff day in and day out, and I eat, sleep, drink, live, breathe repairs of of everything, whether it's a a boat, a motor, or your your car or geez, I don't know, tractor, something else. Um, we've, we've always got to be learning something, right? So that's, uh, we got to be a wealth of knowledge and, and, and a sponge. So in every, every situation that we go for, I try to look at the lesson that we get to learn from it. And hopefully I get to retain most of that information and, and, uh, for, for future reference. So on that note, I, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the, the mad dash ask boat doc live stream. Uh, please remember to, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to, to hop on to the chat and, and, uh, or shoot me a message, uh, check out in our comment section, um, all of our supporters or our sponsors, uh, please give, uh, give these people a, an opportunity if you're in the market. So uh, once again, thank you. Safe boating. Wish everybody uh, a great real spring here right around the corner. Have a good one, guys. We'll see you.